Okay, so I will call the meeting of the Capitola Planning Commission to order. And for obvious reasons, uh, this Planning Commission meeting is not physically open to the public. Limited staff are present in the council chambers and Planning Commissioners are participating remotely via video call. Members of the Planning Commission can use the reaction choices in Zoom to indicate they would like to speak similar to raising a hand. As always, this meeting is cable cast live on Charter Communications Cable TV Channel 8 and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and on Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings can also be viewed live from the city's website with the Zoom meeting link also available on the website. Our technician tonight is Noel Cava, and this is his inaugural uh, effort at being technician. Public comment can be emailed or called into the Planning Commission. Members of the public may submit public comment once for each item by email or phone. You may not submit more than one email or call per items. To call in comments, and this will be uh, on the screen also, is before the item you wish to comment on, call the phone number and enter the meeting ID displayed. Press the hash key when prompted for a participant ID. To raise your hand to make a comment, press star nine on your phone. Wait to hear that you are unmuted and then make your comment. You will have up to three minutes to speak. If you are watching the meeting via Zoom, you can use the participant option to raise your hand and make a comment when unmuted by our moderator. To email comments, identify the item you wish to comment on in your email subject line. Emailed comments will be accepted starting now up until I announce the public comment for that item is closed. Each emailed comment will be read aloud for up to three minutes or displayed on a screen. Emails and calls received by outs outside of the comment period outline will not be included in the record. And before we start the uh, main part of the meeting, for members of the public, if you're going to have public comment or if you're going to want to have the consent calendar item at 1515 Prospect Avenue heard as a public uh, hearing, it would be good if you could go ahead now while we're doing some other um, items to um, either email or call in uh, for those. So next we'll do the roll call. Yes. And I'll go through this. Commissioner Welch? Here. Commissioner Wilk? Here. Commissioner Christensen? Here. Commissioner Ruth? Here. And chair is obviously here. Um, and now the Pledge of Allegiance. Do we have a flag someplace online? No, I guess not. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States, States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, and justice, and justice, justice for all. Okay. <laughs> Next uh, is oral communications, and the first uh, subpart of that is additions and deletions to the agenda. Do we have any? No additions or deletions to agenda this evening. Okay, then next is, a pu is public comment, which is what I just uh, mentioned previously. That's an opportunity for anyone uh, in the public to comment on an item that is not on the agenda. We, and, uh, yes? We do have public comment. Um, Ed Bator, Council Member Bator is on the line. Okay, and other, before we get uh, uh, Councilman Otdorf, uh, other people can continue to submit uh, their requests while he's uh, addressing us. So, Mr. Bottdorf, are you with uh, us? Uh, thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I thank you for this uh, chance to speak. I just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank Commissioner T.J. Welch for eight years of community service. I selected him eight years ago because he was a dedicated person to the community of Capitola. I think he's served the community well. He started off uh, eight years ago, finishing up on the uh, general plan and has worked on many projects over the eight year period, finally ending up with uh, another big job on the- uh, 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 oh, oh, okay. 
Coastal uh, Commission plan. Uh, I, I just want to you know, acknowledge a couple things about T. Day, why, why I think he was a good person to be a, a planning commissioner. I think you all know he has a tremendous love for the community. And what I really admire is that I believe he was the voice or the, uh, the, that represented the homeowner's rights and always stood up to, uh, to, to approve a project that he felt benefited the community, was fair to the uh, homeowner. And uh, I want to thank him for eight years of service. And those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. And let me just add to that that uh, four years ago, Commissioner Welch tried to uh, escape from the job and was not going to continue his, uh, his second term. And uh, I don't know whether you or whoever uh, convinced him to stay with us. And we're very glad of that. So uh, I will second the. Um, Mr. Botdorf's comments about the service that the great service that has been provided by Commissioner Welch over the last eight years. Any other public comments? No one having sent anything in over the period of time that we've allowed. We will move on to commission comments. Comment, Commissioner Wilk? Yes, please. So uh, I would also like to thank uh, Commissioner Welsh for his service. I've learned a lot from him in my two years on the commission. Uh, his vo reasonable voice and wisdom will be sorely missed. And I wish him all the best in his new endeavors and thank him for his service. And then I have a silly, uh, a sillier issue. <laughs> uh, silly. But I noticed that on the, um, uh, application and, and on many applications there's always uh, the Arkansas committee comments and inevitably on the Arkansas committee comments there's somebody either Danielle or Kalish says hey you need to have a drainage site plan and for whatever reason it's always it all, you always have to wait until you get to Arkansas before you realize hey I need a drainage site plan and it occurred to me that that happens so often that maybe there's a better way to communicate that like earlier in the process. So I mentioned that to Katie and she's uh, uh, staff and they said, um, yeah, that, that maybe there's an opportunity to, to get the word out a little bit early, perhaps on the application. So I just like to uh, uh, kind of give that action item to staff and put that in the record so that at least they'll take a look at it and see if there's a way we can uh, we can get the word out a little, little earlier on the drainage site plan. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Anyone, any other commissioners have any comments to make at this time? Mm -hmm. Any staff comments? Yes, um, I too wanted to um, give my thanks to Commissioner Welch for his time on the Planning Commission. I can think back to eight years ago, um, or about seven and a half years ago when I was applying for the planning for the job here in Capitola and watching planning commission videos and <laughs> to study what was going on in town. And um, I remember seeing Commissioner Welch during those hearings when I was, uh, and since that time, I think um, that TJ has always done an incredible job of representing the city as well as having an understanding of the individual applicants that come through and has always uh, looked at all projects fairly and I really appreciate his eight years here um, at the city working as a planning commissioner and look forward to him participating on matters as a resident in the future. So thank you for your time, Commissioner Welch. Thank you. Okay. So that will take us to uh, the consent calendar. There is one item. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Approval of the minutes I skipped. So we have uh, minutes for August, September, and November. And I'm not sure why we skipped October, but uh, there must be a reason. And so I guess, do we have any additions or corrections to the, we'll take them as a group, the three sets of minutes? Chairman Newman, I will uh, have to abstain from the uh, August minutes. I was not in attendance for that one. Okay. And are there any other commissioners that did not participate in any of the three hearings? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Christensen here. Um, I didn't participate in, I think it was the July minutes. 
Okay, well, this is August, September, November. Oh, I'm sorry. You good with those? Yes, I, I believe. Think, I think Commissioner Christensen was also asked in the August minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, August, I apologize. That was, I read it wrong. <laughs> okay, well, good, let's do August separately and then we'll do September and November after that. Do we have a motion among those who can vote on the August minutes to approve? I'd move approval for the August minutes. And do Second. we have a Okay, we'll have a roll call. Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. And chair votes aye. So those minutes are approved. Now we'll take September and November together. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve September and November. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Ruth? Aye. Commissioner Wilk? Aye. Commissioner Welch? Aye. Commissioner Christensen? Aye. And chair votes aye. So that takes aye. <laughs> twice. So that takes care of the minutes. And now back to where I was on the consent calendar. This has given the public um, more time. Uh, has anyone from the public indicated did they want the 1515 Prospect Avenue design permit application to be pulled for a public hearing? There's no public staff. Any Sorry. response from the public in that regard? Uh, good evening, Chair Newman. I, I haven't had any public comments uh, by email. Okay. And, there's and no uh, do any of the commissioners uh, care to have that item heard as a regular hearing? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. If anyone cares to make it? I move approval of uh, 1515 Prospect Avenue. Okay, just for those listening in who might not have the agenda in front of them, this is a design permit for first and second story additions to a non-conforming single family residence, a new detached accessory dwelling unit, and a revocable encroachment permit for a wall in the public right of way. Any discussion? If not, uh, we'll have a roll call vote. Oh, did we get a second? I'll second. Okay. Commissioner Welch. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. Commissioner Christensen. Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Christensen, are you, did we lose you? Apparently we did. Well, we still have a, uh, uh, the chair votes aye, so it'll be four votes aye and one, uh, I don't know if it's an abstention or a um, absence, um, temporary absence. Commissioner Christensen is logging back on. Oh, she's, back. she's back on now. Oh. Uh, Commissioner Christensen, your vote on the uh, consent item. And she needs to connect to audio. Are you, are you, she's muted. Are you muted? I'm, mute. I'm here, I'm sorry, technical difficulties, apologies. Okay. Um, I, I, I vote aye for... Okay, good, that'll be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. That takes us to yeah. the public hearings. We have two public hearings, and the second one, uh, Vice Chair Ruth will uh, take over. But the first one is... Uh, 2110 41st Avenue. This is an application for a design permit and conditional use permit amendment to modify the site layout and building design and add two new canopies with vacuum drops at Master Car Wash, a car washing facility located within the Regional Commercial Zoning District. So, staff report, please. All right. Thank you, Chair Newman. Uh, Sean, you can go ahead and take me to the next slide, please. So 2110 41st Avenue is located on the east side of 41st Avenue between Mattress Firm and Kentucky Fried Chicken. The 25,090 square foot lot is in Capitola's main cor commercial corridor along 41st Avenue. Current site design approved under conditional use permit number 06050 includes a one-story main building attached to a car wash tunnel and a large trellis with vacuum drops, as shown here. Next slide, please. So here's the existing site plan. Uh, under the current business model, the business offers both exterior only and full service vehicle cleaning services. Uh, there's the trellis with the vacuum drops shown in red. 
the vacuum equipment shed in green at the bottom, uh, the detail room in yellow, car wash tunnel in blue, and there's a, some water recycling tanks in orange along the uh, north lot line there. Next slide, please. Here's the proposed site plan, uh, option A. Uh, the applicant is proposing to change to a do-it-yourself flex express business model in which customers pay for services at a self-service kiosk, stay in their cars throughout uh, through the car wash tunnel and then have the option of utilizing vacuum drops and other cleaning materials to detail the inside and outside of the vehicle uh, in the two red areas here. Uh, the proposed site plan includes a reduction in the size of the main building, the addition of two new freestanding canopies with solar panels and 12 vacuum drops, two new self-service kiosks, and a new drive-through lane that circles the south, east, and north perimeter of the lot and leads to the car wash tunnel. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the vacuum canopies here are in red. The two new self-service uh, pay kiosks are in yellow. Um, the green arrows here indicate the new driveway along the south uh, lot line. And then the uh, recycling tanks and the car wash tunnel stay the same. Next slide, please. These are just a few renderings of the option A plan with the canopies with the solar panels. Next slide, please. So here's proposed site plan option B. Uh, the plan set also includes this alternative site design that does not have the freestanding canopies with solar panels. Uh, this one actually instead has the individual freestanding vacuum stations at each parking space. The owner has indicated that they prefer option A with the canopies, but with current construction costs and limited supply of goods, would like to have an alternative design approved as well. Um, in order to accommodate this, staff added a condition of approval regarding the design options to ensure that the alternative, which is not constructed, expires upon the issuance of the building permit. Uh, you can see all of the little uh, freestanding vacuum stations here in red, it's the, the same areas that would be under the canopies and the other option. Next slide, please. So this is the renderings um, with the freestanding vacuum stations. They have this sort of little blue arm that extends out from them that you can see here in the, the upper right image. Next slide, please. These are the proposed uh, rear, front, and side elevations. Uh, the north side really isn't visible because it's um, uh, closer to the lot line and it's not visible to the general public. Uh, this is an uh, image of option A that has the canopies. Next slide, please. Here's the uh, proposed floor plan. As I mentioned, the, uh, the blue area of the car wash tunnel is gonna stay the same. Uh, the uh, lobby area has been reduced a bit in size uh, to accommodate these uh, parking spaces up against the building with vacuum stations and then also the employee parking, which I'll cover later. And then this green area is the mechanical room. Um, the, it already housed the mechanical equipment for the car wash tunnel, but now they're also going to be including the mechanical equipment for the vacuum, um, the vacuum drops in this main building as well, rather than in the outbuilding where it was located previously, which will help with the noise. Next slide, please. In terms of parking, the zoning code does not have a specific parking requirement for a car wash use. The original conditional use permit required eight on-site employee parking spaces. Uh, the current parking is out of compliance because they only have three on-site parking spaces. However, uh, under the current proposal, it includes eight on-site employee parking spaces that were required under the previous conditional use permit. Um, and those spaces are shown here in blue. So since the new management plan requires less employees, additional parking was not required. Next slide, please. Next slide, thanks. Um, so there's one new aspect here. Uh, the new zoning code contains residential transition standards to protect residential parcels that are adjacent to commercial parcels from potential negative impacts of commercial land uses. Uh, and this is the first project since the adoption of that code to require compliance with those standards. So, uh, in case you're wondering why I went through those one by one in, in such depth in the staff report, that was why we, we wanted to make sure you were getting familiar with these new standards. Um, the project as originally proposed complied with the standards for setbacks, daylight planes, and loading, but not the landscaping standards. Uh, I commented on, on that at the meeting, and after the Arkansas site review meeting, uh, the applicant revised the plans to provide a 10-foot strip of landscaped planting area with a tree screen along the rear lot line that is adjacent to several residential properties. Uh, except in the area where the existing car wash lane is located uh, because that part of the existing site design is not changing. So the design before you tonight complies with the residential transition standards. Next slide, please. Uh, 
Uh, the applicant is also proposing a new monument sign along 41st Avenue, which is shown here. Uh, the proposed monument sign is seven feet, six inches tall with a sign area of 33 square feet and a two foot tall ledge stone veneer base. Uh, the proposed sign complies with all of the design standards for monument signs. Next slide, please. The conditional use permit is required for land uses that are generally appropriate within a zoning district, but potentially undesirable on a particular parcel. Conditional use permit is a discretionary action that enables the city to ensure that a proposed use is consistent with the general plan will not create negative impacts to adjacent properties or to the general public. The planning commission is allowed to attach uh, conditions of approval to a conditional use permit to achieve consistency with the general plan, local coastal program, and or zoning codes. Uh, when evaluating a coastal, uh, sorry, conditional use permit, the planning commission must consider several characteristics of the proposed use, including those listed here. Uh, these considerations are analyzed in depth in the staff report uh, and with the inclusion of a condition of approval requiring a new masonry wall along the rear property line, which uh, I'll cover in the next slide, uh, the proposed project is consistent with the general plan and will not create negative impacts to adjacent properties or the general public. Next slide, please. So currently there's a retaining wall that runs along the rear of the property, uh, which is shown here with the yellow line. Uh, because the adjacent residential properties on Derby Avenue are at a much lower grade than the subject parcel. Uh, the retaining wall is topped with an older wood fence shown here in the two photos on the right. The applicant is proposing to install a new six foot tall wood fence on top of the existing retaining wall as part of the proposed project. However, in order to uh, mitigate potential negative noise impacts from the car wash use and to address past noise complaints from the adjacent residential properties, staff included condition of approval number 19 which requires a six foot tall solid masonry wall along the rear property line between the subject property and the adjacent residential development. Solid masonry wall is actually a requirement in the CN zone between commercial uh, properties and adjacent residential development. So this requirement, uh, we don't feel it's unprecedented. Uh, also to ensure that the existing masonry wall is adequate and safe for the continued surcharge of vehicles and the additional masonry wall, the building official is requiring an engineering analysis and uh, potentially a soils report as well prior to issuance of a building permit. Next slide, please. So with that, staff recommends the Planning Commission review and approve the project based on the conditions of approval and findings. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent analysis by the staff. Thank you. We, we worked a lot, a lot with the uh, applicants on this and, and moved very quickly, actually. So, Do we have any questions uh, of the staff before we go to the public hearing? I have questions. Please. This, this is uh, Commissioner Wilk. So, um, sorry I didn't get to these questions, but I, they just occurred to me during the presentation. So. Uh, uh, you mentioned that the uh, you mentioned that he has two options that he's uh, proposing or the applicant is, and you want the second option, whichever one he doesn't choose, to expire upon issuance of the building permit. Is that correct? Yes, that's the way it's worded. So I was wondering if that's a little too soon, uh, in the sense that uh, he, you know, um, perhaps during the early stages of the uh, the building, he may want to switch to, to the other option. And uh, I was wondering why why that would expire so soon. Should there maybe maybe put a, well, exp could you please explain why uh, you had the, uh, the expiration date at all on there? Um, I'm trying to think back of why we, why did you expire one option? Trying to remember the conversation with Katie on this. I'm not. I'm blanking on why we wanted one to expire. I, I can chime in. Um, yeah. I, I think simply because there are two designs that are, they're asking for two designs to be approved. It seemed like, upon issuance of a building permit, at that point they've made a substantial investment in a building permit, um, and they've gone through all their, their drawing stages. We could, uh, I know the applicant's architect is here. If they would like that modified to extend later, it just, th that's the point where they've really um, made a substantial investment. They've probably done all their homework on what, um, what materials are available and timing and cost because it does cost money to go through the building permit stage and um, 
so that's what we thought was the reasonable time in which to expire the other design approved under this permit. But we can also, I, I do see their architect, Bill Kempf is here. And when you go to public comment, you may want to see if they feel okay with that condition or if the timing should be changed. We, we, we can address that when we get into the commission discussion. That's a good okay. point. Great. So, Thank you. So let me, let me ask my other questions then in the meantime. And that is uh, my other two questions involve the retaining wall and the fact that the neighboring uh, houses are so far below. They're basically a mountainside down below this property, at least it seems that way. And so I was wondering if the, the tree screen requirement or the landscape requirement that uh, is, um, you know, between business and, and residential is, is necessary in light of that um, because it's not like they're going to experience the noise directly because it's going to like ba basically be shooting over their housetops if there's any noise. And the same with the view shed. It's not like they're going to be staring at a car wash. They're basically staring at the retaining wall and the trees are just going to probably just block more of their afternoon sunlight. So I'm wondering if the tree screen uh, is uh, it's something you considered waiving? Uh, I did think a lot about that um, because really, like I said, the wall is not actually a requirement, but the trees are, and the wall seems to actually address a lot, uh, mitigate the noise concerns a lot more. Uh, but unfortunately, we as uh, staff don't have the ability to waive those requirements. Um, so, you know, that's just not within our power to waive that. Okay, and then the third question involves the wall versus the fence. The fence is there. Now I can see that maybe a wall would be required just in case there was some art of control car that you would want careening down in the neighborhood. But again, from a, I don't know if that's the purpose of, of, of requiring a wall, but again, because of the, the vertical distance between the two properties, I would think a wall, um, it doesn't add any benefit in terms of privacy or uh, noise abatement, and I'm wondering if that requirement is um, all that necessary. Could you explain maybe why that's in there? Uh, that was just, it was similar to a requirement in the CM zone, as I mentioned in the presentation, and um, that was just a staff addition uh, as a mitigation measure. Uh, if the planning commission does not feel that is appropriate, you are welcome to change that. Um, like I so said, they did propose a, a six foot tall wood fence on there, and if you think that's adequate, then we can remove that condition. Those are my questions, thank you. Okay, maybe we'll, we'll hear from the applicant on those issues. So any other commissioners? If not, we'll open the public hearing, and I know Mr. Kemp is uh, available and probably would like to address us. So. And I don't know if anyone else from the applicant we, also. We do have um, Ia is listed as a, from the public as wanting to speak. And is it okay if I allow her in, Scott? Well, let's do the applicant first. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I mean, she can listen and obviously. Yeah, so we'll, we'll go there, se we'll go to her second. So we'll bring in the- Yeah. So. Mr. Kempf, are you with us? There we go. I'm, I'm here, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you uh, to Matt for uh, all his help in uh, getting us this far. Um, we've reviewed the uh, conditions of approval and um, I, I can't speak for David, we didn't connect today, but, um, but we didn't, I didn't see anything in there that uh, was, was overly, um, Onerous. The the only thing I would like to talk about is this rear wall issue, and um, I believe one of the commissioners brought up some of the, some of the issues that I've been thinking about, and I'm just wondering if the neighbors below would really want to look up at what a, what would basically become a 12 foot tall masonry wall in their backyard. Um, I was more in favor of having the wood six foot wall on top of the retaining wall because it seemed to, to soften things quite a bit. Um, so that, that was kind of my thinking there. Um, the other question about having to require a, uh, a soils report for a wall that's already there, I, I thought that was 
that was an expensive condition for the project. Um, so I'm not sure that that I I could understand where if we were re-engineering that wall where a soils report would be needed, but but if the wall is found to be sound, I'd, I'd like to remove the requirement for a soils report. What about the alternative A and alternative B uh, options? Um, well, I so I'm trying to figure out how this is gonna gonna go forward. We are we are definitely talking about submitting with the plans for the solar system, and so once we submit with the solar system. Uh, the solar array canopies, um, we will be getting to a point where um, that pro that um, design would be cost um, would be bid by um, the contractors, and we would get a sense of where that's going and whether that's going to be affordable for the for the owner. Um, but I definitely think that there could be a point pretty close to permit issuance where where there may be a discussion about changing to the, the less expensive alternative of just having the vacuum drops. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure what, what I would modify in the wording. So my, this is Commissioner Wilf, if I can interrupt, Chair. Yes. Um, so my thought was is that between the, you, I think there's like a, you've got six months between the building permit before you actually have to uh, start activity and my thought was that perhaps you get the building permit uh, in anticipation of starting work and for due to COVID or whatever there's a delay and then that delay expenses might change who knows what might happen you might say dang it I need to go to the other option and I just hate to unnecessarily tie your hands for no reason that's all yeah I agree well we'll talk about that when we get to the discussion I think that's a good point any other questions of Mr. Kemp I have a couple. One is, is this concept, this car wash concept, uh, existent in Santa Cruz, to your knowledge? Uh, this concept is very similar to changes that were made up the street at the Cruz car wash, where the, um, the customer actually stays in the car through the car wash. Oh. Um, but at Cruz car wash, I believe, they have staff that does the vacuuming afterwards. Um, this is supposed to be a more uh, user-friendly, self-service kind of operation where the, the, the car owner would actually do their own um, cleaning of the interior. Mm -hmm. Well, I use one in uh, Scottsdale that is this concept, and I think it's great. I think it's a, it's a really uh, modern uh, approach to car washing because and I, we don't need so many parking because the, there really aren't many employees involved in the operation. Well, we agree. We, we felt the, uh, the employee parking requirement was, was a little onerous, and, and we would love to get a couple more parking spaces in there, but uh, we were just trying to, to stick with the existing approval. Then the sign, I had a question about the sign, because it has a car with a uh, surfboard on the top. And which uh, I don't think will go through your car wash. And what are you going to do when the first person tries to drive through with a surfboard on the top of their car? <laughs> um, I, I would let David speak to that, but uh, I hope he has good insurance. Okay. Any other questions of Mr. Kemp? Um, do we have any other? Uh, oh, you, oh, there is one public uh, person, and is anyone else from the uh, develop from the owner's standpoint, applicant. If not, uh, take the public member. Are you with us? Yes, so this public member uh, has written a, an email as well as is here with um, their hand up. So I'm gonna allow her to talk and she can decide whether or not she wants to read her email out loud or just speak to the Planning Commission. So, okay. Ia, you what is your to... name? And Ia, I believe you're on mute. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Yes. Hello? Yes. State your name, please. Hello? Can, can you give us your name, please? We can hear you. Hello? We can you hear me? Yes, but you can't hear us, apparently. 
We Hello? Can, we can hear you. Hello? Katie, can you speak to her? I can't. Hello? I, Ia, we can hear you. Hello? Hello? Um. Hello? Ia, we can hear you. Oh, I thought you just clicked on me. You should be able to, but... Uh, Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Mm. Um, well, I think we get the gist of the comments. Oh yeah. No, I can't hear it at all. I guess we'll have to read the email. We can start with the email and then come back. Um, Do you have the email, Katie? Yep, yeah, I'm opening the email. Um, let me see if I can share the screen. You know, I'm afraid to share the screen right now because she's dialing in to the instructions that are on the page right now. So I'm just going to give her a moment. Followed by pound. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. All right. We have the email uh, that we can now see. Does everyone have that? Yes. yes. Yeah. Can you, can you hear any numbers? Please re-enter okay, your meeting ID followed by pound. I just want to hear them. Ia, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. So you can't hear us. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Hello? We can hear you. Oh, okay, great. Here we go. Uh, so my name is Ia. Walton, we live behind the car wash. I wanted to comment about what Mr. Wilk said. Um, the noise is excessive already back here. The noise is also excessive across Derby. As you mentioned, that the noise kind of goes over us. It drops right into our yard, but it also goes to the houses across the street. Um, the I do agree, or we do agree, that an additional mason wall on top of the already existing over 12-foot wall, which is there, would not be an appealing thing. However, the current fence has gaps between it. We've, all, we've always had an issue for eight years of privacy because people can look directly over, which they do. Um, they throw towels over there. Uh, food is thrown over the fence. A number of different issues. Our, our children often report water coming over into the yard from the car wash. Um, and then we did send an email because we didn't know if we'd be able to get to comment about these issues. And also the retaining wall said about the soil report, you know, the, re the reinforcement bar was put in 1989 and it was only guaranteed for 25 years, which were passed. And we have had issues for eight years of water seeping out of the wall, not down the wall from the car wash, but out of the wall and the issues with cracks and it is we were told eight years ago by daniel the inspector at capitola that it was out of code eight years ago so obviously we have grave concerns about the wall now they did they looked at the wall for a long time it was done in a very haphazard way with inspection never with an engineer so i'm hoping that i'm very glad to hear in this that there will be an engineer's report but i would really like to also see the soils report are you know it's it's catastrophic if that wall doesn't doesn't hold okay uh thank you do thank have, you do we have any other public comments Ms. mr kemp do you care to respond at all you're muted mr kemp um well, we would, um, I'm not, I've never been to the other side of the wall, so um, I, I guess it, it would be something that we should definitely look at from a safety standpoint. <clears throat> and um, I can definitely discuss it with my, my client, the owner, um, and uh, we can, we 
can get analysis done. I'm, I'm not sure, but but he had said that there has been some some uh, investigations done since he's owned the car wash, but but I'm not familiar with those and can't speak to them. But uh, I, I wouldn't have an issue with there being some kind of uh, condition that would require it to, to be deemed safe. Okay, thank you. So with that, I will close the public hearing and seems like we have a few issues for the commissioners to uh, discuss. Who would like to start? I'll start. Sorry, sorry, Pete, Peter, can I uh, interject for one sec before you start? Sorry, this yep. is Associate Planner Orbach. Um, I just wanted to, to give an answer really quick about that soils report. So I did discuss this with the building official prior to uh, sending out the packet and she preferred that that requirement be in there not necessarily because she wants to use it or thinks she will need to use it but just so that she can and already has that pre-authorization to use it should she need to um, so i think it would really hinge on what the engineering report uh, uncovers as to you know whether she would use that or not so that's why she preferred to have that in there what does the condition say that there will be a soils report or that the building official has the right to require one uh, it says, prior to building permit issuance, property owners shall provide an engineering analysis and a soils report for retaining wall along the rear property line to ensure that the wall can continue to support the surcharge of vehicles adjacent to the yeah. rear lot line and the so new six-foot tall masonry wall along the top of the retaining wall. So That's different from what you just said. That, that's an absolute requirement. Maybe we can change that, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, she, she, uh, there's a lot of sort of boilerplate in, things in here that read like that that she doesn't always uh, require. A lot of times when we do the elevation certificates and no-rise studies, um, you know, she has the, the well, power it, to not require that if she doesn't think it's necessary. So. Well, let me just suggest then when you write the conditions, if they're not absolute requirements, but they're a matter of the building department's discretion, that that's what you say. It did originally say possibly, and then that question came up about whether it say possibly or make it a requirement, and she said we should make it a requirement. So I'm happy to put possibly back in there if that would uh, solve this problem. Okay, let's I'll get back to the commissioners then. Uh, okay. Commissioner Wilk, you wanted to lead off? Uh, okay, yeah, so I, I appreciate the neighbor chiming in on this because the wall, retaining wall safety was not an issue that, that occurred to me, although when I when I looked over the fence into their backyard, I'm sorry to, <laughs> I can see how easily people can do that. Um, I did, you know, I saw a huge drop off and if that wall goes, that is, that's a disaster. So the engineering report is absolutely critical uh, for the safety of the neighbors. So I appreciate that comment and, I, uh, and I'm looking forward to this engineering report um, being, um, being sound, it, because otherwise I'm not sure what's going to happen. So, um, it uh, you know, so those report should be optional um, based on the engineering report. Um, and before I forget, I'd like to thank the applicant for investing in Capitola. I appreciate uh, the investment in our city. But um, yeah, with regards to my other comments, I would recommend that we uh, we just eliminate the option expiration or perhaps put six months on it um, just just to avoid any potential uh, heartburn to the applicant not that he'll he'll necessarily need need our help but why burden him unnecessarily and uh, and then with regards to the general retaining wall versus the fence um, I agree with the neighbor who would prefer a fence but not a um, but not a slotted fence, which is currently, it's, it's more of a picket fence that you can see through. So a, a solid wood fence, I think would be preferable to the wall. And uh, I would like to, um, uh, I, would, I would like to propose that, that we go in that direction as opposed to, re, to the uh, further retaining wall. And then finally, uh, with regards to this tree screen, I, I guess uh, if the applicant's okay with it, more green than to me that I would I would entertain uh, also maybe eliminating. But um, I'm willing willing to hear others others comments before I make a motion. Thank you. Hey, who else? 
Commissioner Ruth, any thoughts? Yeah, I think staff addressed all the potential problems that could occur out here, especially with the with the wall and uh, the soils report and engineering requirement. Uh, I, I can go along with making the soils report uh, optional, depending on what the engineer's report states. And, uh, you know, I can go along with a solid fence, too. Hey, Commissioner Christensen? Um, yeah, I just had a, I, I agree with um, Commissioner Welk and Commissioner um, uh, Ruth's comments about the, um, the soils report and the engineering, but the, what the neighbor was saying concerned me a bit with the um, just the availability of the public being able to access, you know, and view her backyard. Um, I think that the, the, the tree screen is pretty important. Um, just having any type of buffer from the public to actually see through, not just a solid fence, but something to actually push them off the fence so they can't just throw towels or throw something or just look over. I think considering the residential area around 41st Avenue is pretty important. Um, so I would say if anything, you know, having emphasizing the tree screen would be um, pretty important in my mind, but just a comment. Okay, Commissioner Welch. So uh, as far as the solid masonry wall, um, I, I'm benevolent. I could go either way on that. I, I think a solid wall, a fence from um, the neighbor's perspective makes sense uh, as far as uh, the visual aspect. The, uh, you know, I don't, the only thing I think of, and I don't, maybe it's mismanagement coming back, but is, uh, you know, all of the uh, people driving through on their own around that area, <clears throat> a wood fence wouldn't help much to uh, help stop a vehicle should it go, uh, <laughs> not make that turn, but uh, the masonry wall seems like it would help. But I, I, I could go either way. I, I think um, the tree screening would add a little bit to that, maybe from the sound. And uh, so, you know, I, I, you know what, I'm just going to, I could go with the staff on how they want to perceive that. <clears throat> I would hope that Mr. Carson would maybe look at, you know, working with the the homeowners in the back to come to some type of uh, consensus mm -hmm. on, on what they do with that. I, you know, I think maybe an issue and in, in reading the email and listening uh, is uh, fewer employees there. Uh, the music probably won't be an issue and, and maybe the employees working <clears throat> won't be an issue. So having said that, I think uh, overall the project is, is something that I can support. I hate to see the full service go away, quite honestly. Uh, again, and I hope I, you know, I hope it works out well for them. I, I look at the uh, backing out of those slots with not the uh, workers, but just uh, the uh, people who come there to get their cars cleaned in and out, backing out. I just, it looks like it's going to be a, a little bit congested, could be a problem, but. Um, Overall, I think the project's good and, and uh, I could support it. Okay, so we've got a lot of uh, de I, detail. Oh, go ahead, Commissioner Christensen, you wanna add something? Just, I just had a quick question for the applicant if or for staff. Um, is there going to be any, uh, you know, um, supervision? I mean, how many, I, I don't know if I picked up if there was gonna be any supervision on site, even though it was self-serve. It said the, in the business management plan, it said uh, minimum three, maximum five, I believe. So on the busiest weekends, they would have five people working. Okay, so, so there's somebody monitoring, you know, yeah. what people are doing on site. Okay, so, so just to hit some of the details here uh, and more wording than anything else, I think on the, on the two alternatives, I don't see any reason why we can't change that condition to read that the alternative that isn't built expires when there's a final inspection. That's exactly what I wrote down, uh, Chair Newman. I put, uh, I changed condition 17 on my paper here to at project final of a building permit and then the rest reads the same. So basically it puts it off from building permit issuance to building permit yeah, final. That, that, that accomplishes the city's objectives. I'm glad you can read my mind too. 
<laughs> <laughs> then um, I do think that the wording on the soils report needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I think it should read that the soils report is required if, if in the discretion of the building official, it's, it's uh, necessary. Okay. If that's okay with other people. Um, the trees seem like a good idea. I didn't hear the neighbor objecting to having uh, trees blocking their sun. So the trees seem to be a good idea and a solid wood fence seems to be, to me, to be the best uh, compromise of the various issues in the back there. But uh, I'll see where the uh, motion goes on that. And just in response to Commissioner Welch, I'm, I'm on the other side of this. I'm happy to see this uh, semi uh, full service kind of car wash, having used one very successfully, I think they're really a, um, a good option. Better than the ones where you just, where you don't drive through and you go in and clean your car. So you drive through, clean your car, and then you come out and vacuum it if you want. Anyway, that's just a personal preference. So do you think further or do we want to start trying try a motion? I'll try a motion. Okay. So I might need help on this because I don't have the uh, the paperwork in front of me, but basically I'd like to approve the staff. I move that we approve the staff's recommendation with the following three modifications. First, to modify the building, uh, the option expiration to the final permit as opposed to the initial building permit. Second, to allow for a solid wood fence in addition to the option of a wall, and third, to make the soils report optional depending upon the results of the engineering report. In the discretion of the building official? And the discretion of the building official. Okay. Did I'll we... second. All right. Uh, do we have any further discussion? If not, we'll go right to the roll call. Uh, the, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Welch. Aye. Am I hearing some chatter? Um, okay. Commissioner Christensen has her hand up. Oh, oh no, that was, that was from before. Okay. Okay, now, okay. well, now that you've uh, <laughs> put your hand up, you can vote. <laughs> oh, I, I, yes. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner, <Aye. laughs> Commissioner Ruth. Aye. Commissioner Wilk. Aye. And chair votes aye too, so that's unanimous. And uh, we'll move on to the next item, which um, Commissioner Ruth is gonna handle because I am recused and Commissioner Wilk is recused due to proximity of properties. And then I will come back for items six, seven, and eight to why I wrap this up. So okay, thank you, Chairman Newman. Commissioner Ruth. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is uh, public hearing B. Uh, it's a Consideration for a coastal development permit for the installation of anchors for 15 removable bollards, which are security bar barriers at three intersections within Capitola Village, Capitola Avenue and Stockton Avenue, the Esplanade and Monterey Avenue, and Monterey Avenue and Park Place. Staff? Thank you, Vice Chair Ruth. Uh, Sean, next slide, please. Uh, on September 11th, 2020, the city was awarded a grant from the California Office of Emergency Services for removable bollards to improve pedestrian safety during special events. Uh, the grant is intended to be used to provide critical infrastructure security, protect from all threats and hazards, enhance community preparedness, prevent violent extremism, and promote interjurisdictional collaboration. Uh, as we all know, the Capitola Village is host to several large special events each year, such as the Capitola Public Safety Car Show, annual Wharf to Wharf race and Capital Art and Wine Festival, which provide a venue for large crowds uh, for which the Capitol Police Department is tasked with providing security and safe access. Uh, the current method used to section off the village during those special events uh, makes use of manned heavy concrete or plastic jersey barriers. Next slide, please. The city of Capitola uh, is proposing to install 15 removable security barriers or bollards uh, at the three priority intersections in the Capitola Village. Those intersections, as you mentioned, are Esplanade and Stockton Avenue, Capitola Avenue and Stockton Avenue, and Monterey Avenue and Park Place. 
The streets at each of the intersection locations are approximately 25 feet wide and will each require five removable bollards. Next slide, please. The proposed project will install anchors for removable pipe and concrete bollards. Uh, an example of that is shown here. Bollards are designed to provide enhanced protection while at the same time allowing access to pedestrians and preventing the need to have barriers permanently staffed during the event. Next slide, please. Capitola's local coastal plan requires the issuance of a coastal development permit for the installation of the bollards because it does not qualify for any of the exemptions under the Capitola Municipal Code Chapter 17.46. Uh, ballers provide both a visual, visual deterrence and physical means of preventing vehicular traffic from entering the special event area. The proposed project creates a safer means for the public to access the coast and recreational opportunities in Capitola Village during special events and is consistent with the purpose of the local coastal plan. The proposed project complies with required findings of the coastal development permit as shown in the staff report. Matt, can I interrupt you for one second, please? Yeah, that's it. So. <laughs> on, on that slide, it says Park Avenue. And just to clarify for anybody that's watching this, it's not Park Avenue, it's Park Place. Oh, Park Place, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for the correction. Uh, so okay. with that, um, staff recommends, sorry, next slide, please. Um, staff recommends the Planning Commission approve, review and approve the project based on the conditions of approval and findings. And uh, I believe we do have Public Works Representative Kailash Mazumder uh, on the line as well who can um, answer questions as the project applicant for the city. Okay, thank you, Matt. Are there any questions from uh, the Planning Commission? Hearing none, then uh, you said the building official is ready to speak? Uh, I believe Kailash Mazumder should be on the line. Oh, Kailash. Um, okay. okay, Kailash, are you there? Sorry, uh, Sean. Um, Assistant Planner Sasanto or Community Development Director Hurley, he should be able to see if um, yeah, uh, is he's on there and available to speak. Kailash is now a panelist. Um, he will need to unmute, Kailash? unmute his. Um, this is Assistant Planner Sean. I see Kailash is online, but he's muted. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. Kailash, can you hear us? You have to undo your mute button. He's now unmuted. He can hear us. Oh, uh, he can hear us. But we can't hear him. Maybe. Can you undo your mute button? Oh, he's on his phone. A lot of technical difficulties this evening. He's, he's not muted anymore. He said he's on his phone. I have a, I have a quick question there. Uh, Commissioner Ruth, while they're trying to get that on board about the ballers, I thought maybe Kailash would, would know, and I, but maybe uh, Sean knows. Yes. The bollards themselves that are in place, when uh, when they're not in place and they just have the metal cover, how are those metal covers secured uh, in the road? Do we know? Sorry, I don't know the answer to that one. Yeah. I'll wait for it. Yeah, there was just a message. He was questioning how to unmute himself on his phone. I think that original thing said it's like pound nine, star nine, or oh, there we go. Oh, we have to unmute him. He should be unmuted. Kalish, are you there? Well, maybe we can move forward. Is there any commissioner that had any questions for Kalish regarding these bollards? I think this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, I just had the one question for uh, the way those metal plates are secured in the ground. It could be a busy, uh, some of the streets get pretty busy with some low vehicles that I just want to, you know, I'm, I, I'm sure that these are a number of areas that they're secured to the ground. I was just curious how that was. So. That was my only concern. Other than that, I agree it's pretty straightforward. Okay. okay. Is there a motion to approve? Any further discussion? If, if I may, Kalosh uh, sent a message saying bollards will have caps. Um, let me see. Bollards will have caps that lock so that they don't rattle and create hazard. So they will be capped and locked. 
Uh, I, I saw the I saw the cap. I was just curious curious how they set in there so they didn't get ran over and pop up in the air. But uh, I, I'm okay with that. So I'll make a motion to approve. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. I think okay. it's the greatest. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. Uh, let's have the roll call, please. Uh, Commissioner Wilkes. He's recused. Recused. Oh, he's recused. Commissioner Christensen. Aye. Commissioner Welch. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay, that motion carries, and that brings us to the next item on the agenda. And Mr. Newman, we welcome you back. Thank you. Good job. Uh, director's report. Yes, uh, thank you, commissioners. I have a few things to report this evening. Um, first, I wanted to follow up on a few code enforcement issues that have been ongoing. At Mattress Firm, um, they have come into compliance. There, We did have uh, a couple different fines that went out to Mattress Firm, and a, a large blow-up sign was placed on their rooftop at one point. At that point, um, they, I think the local manager called more of a regional manager, and he was extremely helpful. Uh, I think he drove down to Capitola that day to remove the blimp that was on top of the building <laughs> and assured us that it won't be happening anymore. Um, uh, we had um, Planner Orbach drove by over the weekend, over the holiday weekend, and did not see the signs go up over the holiday. So that was good. They had taken them down the Wednesday prior. Um, so we're hoping to have continued compliance there now with the fact that the regional manager is now involved. Um, and across the street at 401 Capitola Avenue, you may recall we issued a conditional use permit for a to-go um, to go food establishment, food and drink. And they were issued their third red tag um, recently <laughs> for making improvements that were not following their building plans. Uh, underneath the, within the Capitola Municipal Code, when a, a permittee is not following their approval, the city can issue, um, we can put them on notice of bringing them back to hearing. And um, I, I sent out a letter with a correction with a deadline and if that deadline was, if they didn't meet the deadline in terms of correction, it'll be coming back to the Planning Commission. I did notice before, prior to the meeting, they took out the improvements that were in the ground um, that were going outside of their property line. And, and if, if, if it wasn't designed or approved in their permit. Um, and then also the trash enclosure area um, they built a more substantial structure than just the simple screening that was allowed by the Planning Commission. So that is in the process of being removed. So if all of those improvements are not, if they don't meet the deadline, that will be coming back to the Planning Commission. Um, but at this point, it looks like they're moving towards compliance. So those are the two updates on code enforcement that I wanted to provide you with. Um, I also wanted to let you know that today, I'm not sure if you saw it the, during the noon hour, the Governor, Governor Newsom's update, um, that a regional stay-at-home order was put in place um, for any of the regions. There's defined regions under the new order. Um, if, if any of the regions have less than 15% ICU availability, um, it prohibits, we'd move into the stay-at-home order, prohibiting private gatherings of any sizes, closing sector operations except for critical infrastructure and retail, and requires 100% masking and physical distancing and all for all others. Um, if we were to go be up below this 15%, um, that it would be in effect for a minimum of three weeks, and then at that point each week they reanalyze um, which regions can come out of that um, out of that stay-at-home order? So it is based on a quantitative data, and they did update the governor's web page this afternoon to show where the different regions are in terms of their ICU occupancy. We are tied in with the Bay Area, 
and luckily we have the most capacity for our ICUs right now. I think we're at about 25% um, and other areas of the state are not as fortunate to be to have as much capacity. We're tied into San Francisco, the whole Bay Area, um, Marin County, and um, so we'll be, th there's great information on the governor's website. Um, and that, again, I just wanna say thanks again to Commissioner Welch for all of his time with the Planning Commission. And it's been a pleasure, and that concludes my director's report. Thank you. Any commission com communications at this point? I guess uh, since this is uh, my last meeting after eight years, uh, I'd like to just uh, say thanks to uh, Council Member Bodor for uh, appointing me and not micromanaging. Doesn't mean I didn't ever get chastised for my perspective from him, but that's okay. That's what it's about. Uh, he never, uh, he actually, he never really discussed uh, a position that he thought I should take or that he had about anything. So uh, it's nice to have the freedom to do your job and uh, for the best that you can. So I appreciate that. Then I wanna thank my uh, fellow commissioners um, you know, I've learned a lot over the number of years. There's, there's a lot of wisdom in the groups that come in and out of here. I've seen a few over the years and I appreciate, uh, uh, your help through the process and thanks to the staff, Katie and Matt and Sean, um, you know, the, as my colleagues know, when people know you're a planning commissioner, you get, uh, a lot of interesting uh, knocks on the door, phone calls, texts, emails, and uh, people with concerns about their projects, either or any project, whether it's positive or negative. So uh, that in turn gets pushed down to uh, the city staff. So I appreciate your diligence to work with me through those things. Uh, it, you know, as uh, Councilmember Botter mentioned, it was eight years ago. It started with the general plan, plan, and then we moved in with the zoning code and. Both of those documents and are extremely important to our community to keep it, you know, the way that uh, our community would like to see that. So uh, I feel like uh, it was a lot of effort, a lot of work put in by a lot of staff, but it was nice to be a part of that process. And, you know, while maybe each of us have different opinions on some aspects of how the code came out or the general plan, uh, it was a consensus and so it's something I think that our community should be proud of. Um, you know, they're, they're very important documents uh, just to protect our community, which is something important in, in Capitola. And I, I took the position pretty seriously. It started really um, when I built my own house and I went through some issues. Not that there's anything terribly negative as the way the city treated me, but we had issues and I, I saw the need that um, I honestly believe that we need to as commissioners protect both the community, but uh, those applicants that go through the process, and I know Chairman News, uh, Newman has said that uh, about me that he has, I haven't seen a project that I didn't like. And, and well, there's maybe, uh, maybe that's not totally true. Um, I don't know that it was really my job to like every applicant, uh, you know, that came before us, what, what they were trying to, whether it's architecturally, design, color, but if it, if it fit within our zoning code and uh, our general plan, I really believe that it's our role as planning commissioners and city staff to uh, try to help these people achieve what, what they want for their own place. And so um, I appreciate you putting up with me through some of these questions. I won't get into the Coastal Commission. I, I don't think they share the same perspective as, as we do of trying to appease and uh, help our uh, community, you know, have the place that they can prosper in and have their own property. So I'll leave it at that. All that to say that I, you guys all the best. I appreciate your input and support on the process and uh, you guys have a great holiday and I look forward to watching you next year. So thank you very much. Thank you. So. Um, this is the last meeting of this commission, this particular uh, group of commissioners. Starting in January, we'll have a new planning commission and there may be some carryover and there 
maybe some changes. So uh, I wanted to say farewell basically to this, uh, this uh, commission as a group. And uh, I just want to say that I think it was a very uh, good year and that the commission has worked together very um, successfully to deal with uh, what came before us and um, to come to consensus in most cases. And when we disagreed, we did so in a, in a professional and civil manner. And I think it was a, it's a good example of how, of how a commission should function. So those who are going to be back next year, uh, which I may be one of, uh, we'll see what happens then. And those who are moving on, best of luck to you. Does anyone else have anything they would like to say before we close up the year? If not, our, our next we will adjourn the, oh, excuse me. Our next meeting is January 21st. The uh, city council is adopting our planning commission schedule next week. So I'll be sending that out after adoption. But again, first Thursdays of each month, except for January, July, and August, it'll be the third Thursday. So okay. next meeting well, is January 21st. All right, well, uh, again, farewell to everyone and happy holidays and we'll see some of you in January and others whenever. All right, good night. Thank you. Thank you.